In the previous section, we've set up friends mechanism in our application. In this section, we're going to set up WebSockets. First, we will set up WebSockets environment on backend and frontend. Then, we will start handling notifications of new content in our newsfeed. Then, we were going to handle friends notifications in real time. In this video, we're going to set up environment for our web sockets on backend and frontend. First, we will configure our Laravel Eco server. Then we are going to prepare backend for sending socket events. At the end, we need to capture these events in Angular. First step on our way to configuring web sockets is changing auth host Laravel Eco server JSON. First, we need to prefix this host with HTTP. And now we need to replace localhost with our LAN IP. So we need to type there our internal IP. So I'm going to use for the purpose of finding my internal IP, IP added there, show comment. And for me, it's this value. Now I can copy my internal IP and paste it here. As a result, we get following combination. Our internal IP prefixed by HTTP protocol. Now we should open our end file and change workspace install PHP Redis variable to true. Now in our Laravel application.end file, we need to change few variables. We need to make sure that broadcast driver is Redis, QE driver is Redis, not sync, and Redis host is Redis. Now in app PHP file in Laravel application, we need to make sure that broadcast service provider is enabled because by default it's commented out. So we need to uncomment it and save file. Now in broadcast service provider PHP file in app slash providers. We need to make sure to add API middleware to our broadcast routes. It's required for socket authentication to work properly. So we need to pass here middleware equals, and here goes another array, API. Here we can see that uh, when this service provider is booted, we see that we require routes channels PHP file and we actually need to go to this file. Here we can find uh, authorization rules for our private channels. So we're going to create a new private channel called uh, test channel. So we need to create here test channel rules. And for now, for our testing purposes, we're just going to return true here. Now in our workspace container, in our Laravel application, we should install PHP Redis package. So we should run composer require Redis slash Redis. So first we need to go into our Docker container, Docker compose exec work workspace bash. And here we need to run composer require Predis slash Predis. Now when Predis has been successfully installed, we can go to event service provider PHP file. And here in event service provider PHP file, we can specify a list of our events. So if we type here up events event and then we run command in artisan, it's going to generate this event file for us. So whenever we want to add new event to our Laravel application, we should first add it to this array and then we can execute command to generate event and uh, event listener files for us. And now we can run php artisan event generate command. And we can see that events and listeners generated successfully. In our application, we can find two new files event PHP and event listener PHP. 
For now, we're just going to modify event PHP file. So first, as uh, we want to fire this test event, we can see that we import here a should broadcast interface. And actually, we need to make sure that our class implements it. So it's going to be broadcasted over sockets. And now we should modify our broadcast on method. And here we can specify our channel name. And for us, it's going to be test channel. Also, please note that uh, this is a private channel, but we could uh, also use public channel. So it would be like this. And everyone will be allowed to see this channel. Yeah, it would be public channel. But uh, we will require some authorization, at least that the user is logged in to access uh, this channel. So we're going to use uh, private channel and the name test channel, the same as we've specified in our channel's PHP file. And now we can also specify the name of event for the broadcasting. So we need to declare a new method called broadcast us and it's going to return a string and this is going to be test. So our event name in frontend application, when we will listen for it, we will listen for event named test. By default, event name is a class name. So it would be like this. but we're going to stick to test for now. And now in our post controller, each time user gets list of the posts, we're going to fire our test event. So to fire event in uh, Laravel application, we can use event method. And to event method, we need to pass new instance of event class. So first we need to specify our namespace, app slash events, and then pass event, which is uh, the name of our event class. So now we will be firing an uh, event, which is going to be broadcasted via sockets each time user gets a list of the posts. Now we need to start Laravel eco server container in Docker. So we need to run Docker compose up uh, the Laravel eco server. And uh, now it has started. We could also remove the uh, detached option if we stop the container. And if we run it once again, then we are going to see information about this process. So, so yeah, we can see that uh, the server has actually started. We can also see uh, some authentication errors here for our Laravel eco server, but uh, we shouldn't be worried about this for certain clients. Maybe, maybe the token that was passed was wrong, but actually in our application, it should work if we pass our correct uh, authorization token. So I have terminated the process and we're going to start Laravel eco server with detached mode option. And another thing we need to do here is we should start listening for our QE. So it's going to be pushed to Redis. So we need to run docker compose exec workspace bash. And here we need to run php artisan QE listen. So it's going to process our events and broadcast them. First, we're going to start by modifying index HTML in our frontend application. So first we need to add the socket IO library to our index HTML. And uh, actually our Laravel eco server is running on 6001 uh, uh, port. And it's exposing also the library file, the JS file. So we are going to use version provided by our Laravel eco server to avoid any uh, compatibility problems. So we're adding new script to head in our index HTML. And now to 
work with our sockets on front-end part, we also need to install Laravel Eco Library. So we can do this either using npm or yarn. I'm going to use uh, yarn add Laravel Eco. And it's been successfully installed. Now we should uh, restart our ng-serve uh, process. We are going to also create a new service called sockets. So we're going to run ngg service sockets. And now we need to add our service to providers in app module TypeScript file. And here to our providers array, we need to add socket service. And it's going to be auto imported here. This is our socket service, but uh, I'm going to already provide the methods necessary for testing that our sockets are working properly. So first we import uh, echo from laravel echo library then we create echo property on socket service and we create two methods first method is setup with token token is our authorization token and another method is listen listen method contains logic to listen on private test channel this is the name of private channel and then we listen for event name so our event name is test because in our broadcast as function we've returned test string but if we don't prefix this string in our frontend part with dot then laravel echo would automatically append uh, here a uh, class name and uh, application namespace so uh, we don't want that so we need to prefix our event name with a dot if it's custom and in our case it is custom and uh, at the end, we have uh, our callback function. So basically, we specify what to do when event occurs. So we log the event information as well. We alert message received test event via sockets private secured channel. And uh, now we can dive into our setup with token function. If token is null, then we basically clear our echo instance. And for now, for configuration of our echo we specify that broadcaster is socket io uh, this is the library we've imported in our index html our host is where our docker application is running but uh, using port 6001 and uh, this is very important part we need to specify authorization headers so we need to specify authorization bearer token a similar to firing HTTP requests when working in a standard way with our Laravel backend. At the end, we can notice that we fire this listen function. So basically, when our socket surface is correctly set up, then we start listening for our test event on private test channel. With our socket service, we should import uh, our socket service to our service. So we need to modify our constructor. Now we're accepting socket service. And then in our fetch current user info, we're going to call this socket service setup with token. And here we're going to pass this token property. Now we are going to log into our application and we should see information about socket event fired after we get list of the posts. Let's click login. And just after we've logged in and uh, we got our posts list, we can see a message that we've received test event via socket's private channel. So it works great. And now we can also see information about this event in WebSocket section in Network tab. Here we can go to Frames and we can see that our Sockets event have been broadcasted via WebSockets. In our PHP Artisan QE listen process, we can also see that uh, events are being processed in real time. So now we've correctly set up our sockets environment, both for our frontend and backend. In this video, 
We've set up environment for sending and capturing sockets.